Hey, Tim DeSfascio here. It's Psychrometric Saturday again, and I cannot find my microphone, so that's why the acoustics are a little bit off, so I apologize for that. But we've been talking a lot about duct condensation, and today we're going to talk about what recommendations that we can give as HVAC professionals to remedy duct condensation. Now, we're going to go through a few scenarios and kind of talk our way through the process and what recommendations we're going to give them. So we're going to first start in the crawl space. Let's talk about our situation. Crawl space is really humid. It's around 75 degree dry bulbs. You know, crawl spaces really don't get that warm. They stay around 75 degree dry bulb, even in the dead of summer. Uh, 70 degrees dew point, so we're really, really humid. Uh, and then the, the ductwork in there is dripping, as you can see. It's got 55 degree air coming out of it and maybe it's wrapped with R6, sort of an average duct insulation there. And so studies have shown that a 55 degree duct in a 75 degree environment will have a 70 degree outer temperature when it's wrapped with R6. So if you notice, our 70 degree dew point is exactly the same temperature as our 70 degree outer temperature. Whenever we're close or below the dew point, anything that's that temperature is gonna sweat. So what do we do about it? Well, remember that condensation happens when humid air hits something cold. So to prevent condensation, we either need to make the air less humid or we need to make the something cold a little bit warmer. So what options do we have in a crawl space when we think about it in that way? Well, we don't want to make that duct temperature any warmer. That air conditioning unit is putting out 55 degree air. It needs to stay that temperature. So we can't really do anything about the something cold. Maybe we could propose R8 ductwork, but the difference between R6 and R8 ductwork as far as outer temperature is only around one degree. So we're not really moving the needle and we're spending a lot of the customer's money by doing that. So what do we do about it? Well, we can't really have a lot of control over the temperature of the crawl space, so we can't make this outer jacket of the ductwork much warmer because we can't control the temperature in that crawl space. But we can do something to control the dew point. So can we lower the dew point where it's now a lot lower? And so it's okay that this surface temperature of the ductwork is around 70 degrees. That we do have control over at least recommending. So where does the moisture come from in a crawl space? Well, a lot of it comes from the ambient air. Of course, we got a vent here so that moisture from the outside is going to get in the crawl space. But a lot of it comes from the ground, especially after a lot of rain. The water wicks up out of the ground. And the only thing to stop it there is that plastic that's in the floor of the crawl space. Well, if that plastic is not in good condition, if it doesn't cover 100% of the crawl space, if it doesn't seal to the foundation wall and all the support pillars, then moisture is just bypassing that plastic and it's just sort of locked in here in the crawl space. So what can we do? Well, we need to recommend a sealed crawl space. And there is a lot of things that go into a sealed crawl spaces. So if you're a contractor that wants to offer that, you need to read up on all the steps that it takes to make a true sealed encapsulated crawl space. But at the very least, just getting plastic and a little bit more coverage in that crawl space would be a great recommendation. Maybe that's not a service you offer as an HVAC contractor, but you can refer them to a contractor that does do that. And now you're lowering the dew point in the crawl space and you're solving the problem. In the interim, you could place a fan that would blow on the ductwork and just move air and that could prevent condensation from, from developing and that moisture from developing. But you're an HVAC technician. We don't make recommendations of Walmart box fans to fix problems. We want to have true solutions. Now, let's move over to the attic. So now we're on a service call where the ducts in a spray foamed attic are sweating. Now remember, condensation happens when humid air hits something cold. So what's happening here? Well, again, we've got to either raise the temperature of something cold or we have to lower the dew point of that humid air. Well, in this case, we've got 85 degree dry bulb temperature in the spray foam attic and the dew point is really, really high at 80 degrees. Now that's a realistic situation. And we've got ductwork, again, it's putting out 55 degree air as it should, it's wrapped with R6. Uh, and the outer jacket of that ductwork is 75 degrees according to, to the studies that are made. So we're below the dew point of our attic. We're gonna be sweating a lot and this happens a lot. Now, what could be the cause of it? Well, we have to ask ourselves, can we raise the temperature of this uh, ductwork? Now, the only way that we're going to raise the temperature of this attic is to rip out the spray foam and turn it back into a vented attic. That's a lot of work. That's not really recommended. So what do we do? Well, we have to lower the dew point of this attic. And why is this attic so humid if 
it's spray foamed. Well, it's probably a bad spray foam job. If you walk up on this situation and you've got an attic uh, that is 85 degrees and it's 75 degrees down below, I guarantee you there is missing spray foam in here somewhere. Uh, also, if it's that humid, 80 degrees dew point, that needs to be addressed. Where does that humidity come from? Well, it comes from the outside and it also comes from the humans. But that humid air is buoyant and it will come right up here and it's gonna hang out in the upper part of this attic and it's just gonna stay there and do damage. So what do we have to do? Well, we need to go around and we need to check the spray foam job or we need to get a contractor in there that can do that. A blower door test with some theatrical smoke will reveal where the leaks in that spray foam job are so that they can be addressed. The other thing is we need to put some conditioned air into this attic. Now, I am not a fan of just cutting in supplies and putting in conditioned air in a spray foam attic. I would much rather have a dedicated dehumidifier that does that. But again, those are recommendations now that you as an HVAC contractor can offer. We need to lower the dew point of that attic. We need to find out where the moisture is coming in, solve it at the source, and then put some active conditioned air into that attic to help keep that dew point a lot lower so it is lower than the outer temperature of the ductwork. Now, let's consider another situation that happens in attics. So we are back in an attic and we've got, instead of spray foam, somebody has used a radiant barrier. That's that reflective shielding that you see up in attics a lot of times. And it's meant to reflect the sun's energy to keep that attic cooler. And it does that actually very well. The problem is it makes the attic a little bit too cool. And since that attic is vented, we still have all the humidity from outside. We could have 75, 80 degrees dew point in that attic. But unfortunately, we don't have the heat that is warming up the outer jacket of this ductwork and bringing it above the dew point. Instead, that ductwork is still below the dew point of the ambient air around it, and that duct is sweating. So again, we need to fix either the something cold, make it a little bit warmer, or we need to lower the dew point of the air. Now, this is a vented attic. It's designed to be able to communicate with the outdoors. We have two choices here. We can either recommend that they get a contractor in there and do a full encapsulated attic retrofit and then put some conditioned air in there, do an encapsulated attic the right way, or we need to recommend that they remove that radiant barrier if, because that radiant barrier is cooling the attic a little bit too well and it is preventing that duct temperature from getting above the dew point. Now, a lot of people are like, well, but it saves me energy and saving energy is important, but preventing condensation and all the other biological growth that, be, that happens because of condensation is a lot more important. Let's consider one other recommendation we can give in a attic duct condensation problem. Okay, we're back in an attic, and this time, this attic has got ductwork that's sweating. That ductwork has got R8 insulation on it. The duct is making 55 degree air, but the customer had an insulation come in there and add insulation to their house, and they thought it'd be a good idea. You know, if we just blow insulation all over the ductwork, we're gonna save some energy. We're gonna keep those ducts cool. And actually, they're right. They are gonna keep those ducts cool. So if you have a nice hot vented attic, it may be a 100 degree dry bulb up there. The humidity is going to be pretty high. It's going to be the same dew point that it is outside. And let's say it's 75 degree dew point. And normally, if our ductwork was not having blown insulation all over it, it would be 95 degrees. It would be nice and hot, well above the dew point of the air. Our duct would not be sweating. But then they blow insulation over it. And now that insulation creates sort of a cool pocket right here. So we've got 80 degree dry bulb instead of 100 degree ambient temperature. But our dew point is still the same. The moisture can get through that fluffy stuff, even if it's knocking the temperature down. The problem is this cool pocket no longer allows the outer jacket of the ductwork to be 95 degrees. It is now 70 five degrees we're at the same exact temperatures our dew point and our ducts are sweating so what is the solution we got to get that blown insulation off that ductwork expose it to that nice radiant heat coming off the attic yes that ductwork is going to pick up a little bit of heat yes you're going to be, be spending a little bit more energy to cool that house but you're going to prevent this condensation forming on the ductwork, and that is more important. So even though you're an HVAC technician and you are really dealing with the DAC system, you still get sent on ductwork condensation problems. And very rarely is the problem the HVAC system. The problem is the ambient humidity problem. And so those are the recommendations that you have to offer and so that you can have lasting solutions to your customers that actually work. And that's why building science and HVAC go hand in hand. I know I threw a lot of information at you, but I hope that you learned a lot in this class. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Psychometric Saturday.